Amazon down about 2.5% at the moment after announcing it is moving into the exosphere with what it's called Project Kuiper. The plan is to launch 3,000 satellites to beam internet connectivity, broadband connectivity all across the planet, particularly to the underserved people all around the world. Now, this directly would compete with SpaceX's Starlink satellite project, which is facing additional hurdles at this hour from a foreign government. We have France's highest administrative court reversing a French regulator's approval that granted frequency bans to the satellite constellation so it could serve French users. The overlooking French uh, government officials are saying now, no, nope, you didn't give it enough time for public comment. In the meantime, Amazon is calling Project Kuiper one of the largest commercial launch deals ever. It's got contracts for 83 launches with three different rocket companies, including Bezos's space baby, Blue Origin. The plan is to launch two satellites by the fourth quarter of this year. Can he beat Elon Musk and SpaceX? even though they're coming in from behind. I want to bring in Andrew Chan, and he's the CEO of Procurium, which launched the world's first pure play space ETF with the ticker symbol UFO, as well as former NASA astronaut and Astronaut Hall of Fame inductee Tom Jones. Uh, Tom, you've had uh, your share, certainly, of spacewalks and launches and, and you know, e efforts into space. Tell me, do you think it's a possibility for Amazon to catch up that quickly and start launching this stuff in the fourth quarter of this year? What kind of infrastructure do you really need to get this going? I think there is room for uh, Amazon to catch up. Uh, the launcher capacity is there. We've got new rockets being rolled out by United Launch Alliance and by uh, Blue Origin. And they're a little bit behind schedule, but I think that they'll start flying by the end of this year. The launch pads are down there at the Kennedy Space Center and at Cape Canaveral, where the, the Space Force base is. And uh, Ariane Space has capacity at, uh, in French Guiana as well for their new rocket. So I think the, these new launchers are going to be a way, provide a wave of new low-cost launch opportunities. And Amazon's betting that at least one or two of them will come through. Andrew, this has got to have you excited because all this shows is that the private sector is all in on competing when it comes to doing things in space. And this has got to be certainly important for the long-term future of UFO, your space ETF. But tell me how you view this. Coming from Amazon, knowing that Amazon has Amazon Workspace, Amazon AWS, and you've got Blue Origin behind it, not to mention some really important partnerships with, of course, that deal that has Lockheed Martin and Boeing together helping. Absolutely. We're, we're thrilled to see a deal of this size. Now, it's not necessarily a surprise that this deal would eventually be announced, but it is exciting to see the diversification of launch providers that are being used for this massive project. So like you said, uh, you, the, the United Launch Alliance is a JV between Boeing and Lockheed, both of which are companies in UFO. And then you look at Arian Space, and there are numerous um, owners of that, including UFO holdings like uh, Airbus, Thales, and uh, Avio out of Italy. And so you know, this is actually benefiting many companies, not just the ones that you saw necessarily announced on paper. And this is also you know, potentially going to put a constriction on the supply that's out there from launch companies. And you know, as an effect, other companies might need to look to other providers like an Astra or a Rocket Lab to help them. And that could mm -hmm. help benefit those companies as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we should take a look at uh, Astra stock as well. But that, of course, is within, I believe, UFO. Tom, talk about what you know, and that is that you can't just start launching satellites up in the air. Don't you need to test rockets and, and work on the functioning and the real planning of all of this? This leads me to believe that Jeff Bezos doesn't do anything halfway. He's probably been working on this for quite some time. Right. He's got to have a satellite manufacturing capacity to, to launch 10,000 satellites over the next decade or so. Mm -hmm. And he's got to have the, you know, the control facilities that can manage that constellation. And of course, you've got to provide user interfaces, you know, something you can hold in your hand to receive the Internet signals back down on the ground. And then, you know, the big question mark is these big rockets. You know, the, he would like to launch 100 of them at a time, just like SpaceX has been doing with Starlink. And so we haven't seen the first launch of any of this new generation of rockets, and um, we'd like to see those get going in the next um, couple of years at the latest, just because of the need from Space Force for NASA's science payloads. And you know, some of the uh, rockets from United Launch Alliance, for example, the Vulcan, are going to take the place of the standby Atlas V, which provides uh, supplies to the International Space Station. So we need the, these new rockets to come online. And I think Amazon's betting that you know, the other users will help 
pull those along and, and create that launch rate that they'll need to establish this constellation. And, and Tom, just to follow up on that, don't you need on the ground infrastructure? Uh, I mean, you know, you're talking about maybe going to Cape Canaveral, you're dealing with NASA. I followed Tesla and SpaceX since 2005, 2006, where Elon was working for years trying to convince NASA to give him a shot. And these things take quite some time, do they not? True, but Blue Origin already has a leased launch pad there at Cape Canaveral. Uh, the French, uh, I'm sorry, the Europeans, the Ariane Space Company, mm -hmm. you know, they just lost their Soyuz supplier in Russia. So now they have extra launch capacity down at French Guiana. Got it. And also for um, uh, Blue, um, <laughs> the ULA, they've already got a pad at Cape Canaveral that they use for launching their Atlas V as it phases out the new Vulcan will phase in. So the facilities are already there and you've got a, a well-established tracking uh, and range safety establishment there. So the infrastructure is not a problem as I see it. Okay, Andrew, as you look at the future of these names as investments, and, and UFO has really been the very first to put them all together here. It hasn't exactly done stellar, so to speak, and make a little play on the, the space words here, but what about up about 7% this month? That's certainly nice. But over the past year or so, we could look at the chart. When do you expect this thing to really take off in a more meaningful way? Andrew? Oh, I think we lost his mic. Uh, all right. Well, regardless, we'll, we'll end on a positive note simply by saying that 7% 7, 7 month to date. It's a young month, just a few days into April, but uh, we'll be watching it all. Tom, Andrew, thank you very much for joining us.